my name is Kat, and today I want to talk about some things I have been loving lately. Relatively lately. This isn't strictly a 2019 favorites video, but it's essentially a 2019 favorites video. I already talked about my top 10 favorite books of 2019, so I'll link that video up there and down there if you want to check it out. But for this video, I want to talk about my other favorites. I want to talk about TV shows and music and miscellaneous and movies. I think there's a couple movies on my list. I'm not a big movie person. I prefer to just binge watch lots and lots of television. And yeah, we're gonna actually begin with the TV shows because that is the longest section of this list. And we're gonna start with the two shows that are currently occupying the most brain space. These two shows are both currently airing, so I spend most of my week just waiting for the new episodes. First is The Good Place. I love this show so very much. I've talked about it in a favorites video before. We're just a couple weeks out from the series finale of this show, so as you can imagine, I am preemptively distraught about that. This show is just brilliant. The cast is amazing, it's hilarious, but it also deals with such interesting, complex topics. The way this show balances humor and like big philosophical questions is it's just it's so good it's so good i've been watching the show since the very first episode aired and i am incredibly sad that the end is nigh but the show is ending because the creator and the writers feel like that's what's right for the story and i really respect that so i'm not mad that it's ending i'm just gonna miss it a whole lot the other show that i just can't stop thinking about or yelling about on twitter is ruby this one was a surprise for me i started watching this show because i saw some fan art for one of the ships known as bumblebee and I saw this fan art and I was like, this looks like my kind of thing. And I started watching the show and it turns out that this is extremely my kind of thing. This is a web series, so the episodes are super short, but on the plus side, you can binge them all very easily online right now. I'll actually link a playlist down below because you can watch this show on YouTube right now. Like the entire first season is about two hours. The entire second season is like two and a half hours. It does not require a large time investment and it, it, it is, it's, it's so good. <laughs> I've heard that some people aren't a fan of the animation and some people think it's kind of cheesy, but I love all of it. <laughs> Basically, it starts off being about these teenagers with superpowers and really cool weapons who are attending a school where they are learning how to fight these monsters that are plaguing the world. But the scope of the story really expands. Like, it's so much more epic and awesome than what you assume it is in volume one. The voice acting is great and the soundtrack is amazing and the fight scenes are so cool. And again, the scope and the epicness of the story just keeps expanding. Like, it's so good. There's just a couple more episodes left in this season. And uh, again, I just spend my weeks waiting until Saturday morning when the new episode of Ruby is here. <laughs> I highly recommend this show. You can watch almost the entire thing on YouTube right now. What are you waiting for? Click the playlist link in the description. Don't even finish this video. You don't need to. Just go watch Ruby. The next show I want to talk about is one that instantly became an all-time favorite for me. And also I've watched it about a thousand times. And that show is Yuri on Ice. Now I'm not gonna talk about this show much in this video because I, I do feel like it's such a rich and amazing experience to watch this show for the first time, not knowing anything about it and not having any expectations about what's gonna happen. Like not only is this show cute and fun and an another show with a great soundtrack, but there is like some next level genius storytelling at work here that I am just gonna be forever impressed by. I'm hoping to do a full video talking about this show because I could go on and on about some of the brilliant storytelling techniques. Like I could talk about unreliable narrators and the subtle antagonists of this show and perfect foils that complement and contrast each other. The competition pacing paired with the slice of life relationship aspects. I could write an entire dissertation comparing the three performances of the routine Stay Close to Me and what each of these performances means in the larger context of the show. Oh, and also this show has 
has one of the best plot twists that I've ever had the joy of experiencing. <sighs> it's so good. It's so good. If you've seen Yuri on Ice and you love it as much as I do, I encourage you to check out some videos on my other channel. I made some music videos because I was watching Yuri on Ice right when Taylor Swift's new album came out, so if you're into that combination, <laughs> I'll link those below for you to check out. But don't watch them if you haven't watched the show because they're full of spoilers. And I'm telling you, watching the show for the first time, not knowing what you're getting into, is such a fun experience. Don't ruin that for yourself. It's a real treat. Next up on my list is Umbrella Academy. Now, I'm not as passionate about this show in this moment because at this point in time, I watched the show like a year ago, so it's not super fresh in my brain, but I still loved it. I, I watched it more than once when it came out. So much of this show is just extremely my shit. It does have some problems that I could rant about at length, but I rant because I care. <laughs> Overall, I just really, really enjoyed it, and I am so excited for season two, which is hopefully coming soon. Another show that became an instant all-time fave is Good Omens. I already kind of talked about this in my favorite books of 2019 video because Good Omens is an adaptation of a book that I read in 2019 and I also loved the book, but I also completely loved the show, so I have to mention that here too. This is one of my favorite, if not my number one favorite of all time, book to show adaptation. I just loved it. In particular, I want to talk about the extended cold open of one of the episodes where we get some new content that is not in the book. That was just a real treat. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Highly recommend both book and show. Next up, I want to talk about My Hero Academia, which is another anime that I binge watched over the summer and that I just became instantly obsessed with. It's about teenagers with superpowers training to be heroes and it's just it's really good shit. <laughs> Apparently I just really love shows about teenagers with superpowers attending a specialized training school. Between this and Ruby and Umbrella Academy, which is only kind of like that, it's, it's just it's my new favorite like subgenre of the year. I don't think My Hero Academia and Ruby are super, super similar, but I do think if you like one, you will like the other. So recommend them both. <laughs> Another show that I really loved this year was She-Ra. We have four seasons now, although it's more like three seasons because season two and season three were kind of half seasons that really should have been one, but whatever. And I think season four is my favorite. Like the, the scope of the show has really expanded and things are just getting like really epic and awesome right now. I am so excited for the next season. I hope it comes out soon and it, it probably will because we got like the first four seasons over the course of a year. So they're on a fast production schedule. But yeah, it's a great show. There's cool powers and cool politics and great friendship dynamics. My favorite aspect of the show is definitely the Katra and Adora dynamic because I just love that kind of thing. It's it's a mwah, chef's kiss, you know? Next up, I just want to briefly mention The Hundred because this show is not a new addition to my favorites list. I've loved this show for a while, but I gotta say, I really, really loved the most recent season. Like it was really good. <laughs> and the next season is the final season, which is sad, but I am hyped for it because like I, I can't wait to see what they do for the last season and how they wrap everything up and if my OTP of that show is gonna happen. I feel like it, ha it has to happen, it has to happen, right? It's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. And finally, on my favorite shows list, I have the first two episodes of season eight Game of Thrones. It's so weird that we got those two solid episodes and then the rest of the episodes just don't exist and we all just have to wait for George to come through with the final books so we know how everything ends. Yep, 
Yep, that's that's what that's what happened. <laughs> Moving on to music, let's talk about the albums that I really loved this year. We're gonna have to get through these fast because I spend too much time talking about television. Lover by Taylor Swift. I adore this album. It is beautiful. So many songs that became instant favorites. The songs that I've played the most from this album are probably Getaway Car. Yeah, so I definitely meant Cruel Summer. I'm just dumb. <laughs> Lover and Afterglow, which was kind of a surprising one for me. But I listened to Afterglow on repeat while I was writing my book, so I just really racked up a ton of listens on that one. And yes, I did spend way too much money on tickets to Loverfest, so I'm looking forward to that as my wallet weeps. Next up on my list is Phantoms by Mariana's Trench. Mariana's Trench, Mariana's Trench. I'm a terrible fan. I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. They are so underrated and every one of their albums is gold. I, I love them so much. I love every single album they've put out and Phantoms, their most recent album is no exception. It is beautiful. It's the kind of album that you want to listen to from start to finish in one go. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I recommend them so much. Wasteland Baby by Hosier. This album is beautiful. Now I've been familiar with Hosier for a while, but it wasn't until this year that I actually sat down and really listened to his whole body of work. Damn, he is so brilliant and talented and his lyrics and his voice is just, it's, it's so good, so good. He's so good. Now, my favorite Hosier songs of all time are from his first album, Work Song, and From Eden are masterpieces. But I think overall, as like a full album, Wasteland Baby, I probably like a little bit more than the Hosier album because it's just, it's so beautiful. My favorite song from this album changes all the time depending on my mood but I think at the moment it's the track called Wasteland Baby. It's just a beautiful song. I just I adore this album. I adore both of his albums. He's he's so good. He's so good. Next up let's talk a little bit about Doom Days by Bastille because holy crap is this album fantastic. Just the mood and the vibes and the aesthetic it's all so good and it's the kind of album where like as a whole, the cohesive album is magnificent and brilliant, but also so many of the songs are just individually great. It's just, it's a fantastic piece of work. I loved it. Then let's talk a little bit about Billie Eilish's album, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? Another album that's just so good as a whole, but also individual songs are just fantastic. I love the mood of this album. It has such an interesting kind of darkness to it, and just the production feels really fresh and interesting. Fantastic album. I am so excited for her to have a long, awesome music career ahead of her. Next up is Tessa Violet's most recent album EP. Uh, it's, oh, is it called Bad Ideas? I'm a terrible fan. I love this album. Every song is fantastic. I think my favorite songs are Bad Ideas, Crush, and games. But again, the whole thing is really, really good. And I also really, really love the music videos that she's put out for these songs. It's just, it's fantastic stuff. I highly recommend. I'm sitting here editing this video when Halsey drops her new album, Manic. So I took a break from editing to listen to the album from start to finish, as you should. And now I'm just so mad that I, I didn't include it in this video, so I, I had to pick up the camera to film this little clip to include it in this video because it's so damn good. I already knew I was going to love this album because I loved Graveyard and Clementine and Suga's Interlude. After just one listen, my favorite songs are probably I Hate Everybody, 3AM, and finally Beautiful Stranger. Though, again, the whole album is fantastic. It's great. It's, I'm, I'm so excited to finish editing this video so I can just listen to this album on repeat for the next couple weeks. Yep, that's the plan. All right, that's it. Back to the previously recorded content. Thank you.
And then finally on my music list, I just have written down here everything that BTS and Twice have done lately. Those are my two K-pop groups that I currently stand the hardest. I just adore everything they do, and I I can't wait for them to do more stuff. Although also I'm okay if they take breaks because like they're so overworked. On one hand, I'm like, yes, queen, slay. But on the other hand, I'm like, yes, queen, take a vacation. Are, are you eating well? Are you sleeping enough? Are, are you okay? <laughs> okay, it's almost 3 a.m. And I have to film another clip because BTS released this Black Swan music video and it's so good, it's so good. I can't not mention it in this favorites video. It was poor planning on my part. I should have known that so many of my faves were releasing music tonight. Uh, but yeah, Black Swan by BTS is very, it's very good, it's very good, it's very good. I, I, need, to, I need to shout it out specifically in my favorites video. That's all, that's, I, <laughs> Get better be all. <laughs> Moving on to movies. Again, my movie list is relatively short because I'm not a big movie person. I went to the movie theater exactly three times in 2019. I saw Avengers Endgame and Spider-Man Far From Home, both of which I consider favorites. And then I also saw Men in Black International, which I would not consider a favorite. It wasn't terrible, it just wasn't great. I was interested in it primarily because I love Chris and Tessa separately and especially together. But instead of seeing Men in Black, I, I probably should have just watched Thor Ragnarok again because that is one of my all-time favorite movies. I also saw, not in theaters, but when it came onto Netflix, into the Spider-Verse, which was fantastic. Every frame of this movie is like a piece of art. Beautiful, awesome movie. But yeah, that's kind of it for movies for me. <laughs> there are a lot of movies that recently came out that I think I'm gonna love, but I just haven't seen yet, so I have to wait until they're available on Netflix or Hulu or iTunes, wherever I can watch them from the comfort of my own home. Like, I still haven't seen Frozen 2, or The Last Star Wars, or Knives Out, I think I'm really gonna enjoy. Little Women, I also wanna see. I just don't wanna see them enough to leave my apartment and pay $15 to sit in a dark room with strangers to watch the movie. So just keep an eye out for these movies on my favorites list of next year. <laughs> and finally, I have a couple of miscellaneous favorites. The first thing on my miscellaneous favorites list is Baby Yoda. Now, I have not seen a single episode of The Mandalorian. I don't even have Disney Plus. I'm waiting until I'm in a really bingy mood to do a free trial and I'm just gonna spend those seven days doing nothing but watching Disney Plus. That's my strategy. So all I know about Baby Yoda is what I've seen on Twitter and Tumblr in memes and clips from the show, but I would die for that child. I am a 31 year old lady and I cannot wait to take my grown ass to build a bear so I can build a baby Yoda doll. That is my dream. That is my deepest heart's desire. If I looked into the mirror of Erised, I would see the child. The baby Yoda. Next up on my miscellaneous favorites list is Lore Olympus, which is a webcomic. It's free to read online, although if you join the Patreon, you do get the episodes early. It's a really fresh and fun modern take on the myth of Hades and Persephone. And of course, we follow a lot of the other Greek gods as well. But yeah, the art style is so beautiful and unique and I really love the storytelling. I binge read the entire archive in a night and now I just have to wait painfully for each new weekly update. And then I have two apps on my favorites list here. The first is Procreate, which is a kind of like a, a drawing Photoshop type app and it only costs $10, so that was super appealing to me because Photoshop is a really forking expensive. I used to make my thumbnails in Photoshop back in the day when I had just purchased Photoshop and before they switched to a monthly fee version, but I really hate that monthly fee bullshit, so 
I, I don't use Photoshop anymore. And I'm trying to get better at art and drawing and digital art. And Procreate is a really great, fun app for doing that. I mean, I'm not actually good at art, so it's frustrating, but I do follow a lot of digital artists online and a lot of them use Procreate to great results. So like, it's a, it's a useful, good app. I'm just not good at art yet. So I haven't been able to like reap those benefits, but it is really fun to play around with and, and draw and do thumbnails and stuff. So Procreate, recommend. And then the other app that I've really been loving that is free, which is extra great, is CoStar. This is an astrology and horoscope app that I really enjoy because I like astrology and Every time I talk about astrology, I get rude comments from someone mocking me for liking astrology, but I don't care. I like it. It's not hurting you. Leave me alone. Let me live. My favorite part about CoStar is that I can easily reference my chart and also I can totally creep on my friend's charts. With their permission, of course. You know, like you have to approve friend requests to see someone else's chart because that's personal information. And I do also really enjoy the daily horoscopes, even though some of them are occasionally quite eyebrow raising. <laughs> okay, I think that's it. I hope that's it. I've been filming for way too long at this point. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this very long video of me rambling about some things I love. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a wonderful night and I will have another video up soon. So I will see you then. Bye!